Welcome to day seven of the advent of code. Today is all about colored bags containing other colored bags containing other colored bags and so on. <laughs> Can you smell the recursion? <laughs> okay, so um, first of all, if we want to process these lines, we have to understand the format and pass it, okay? So I'll try to say uh, the first color is the container and it contains other counted colors, for example, one times uh, bright white or two times muted yellow, right? That's the information that we're really interested in. Okay, and here I already prepared a little skeleton, pass back, uh, given a string in this input format should produce a map with this output format. And this is just my own convention to document functions via examples. Uh, closure doesn't really care. So if you evaluate this, this is just a keyword. This is just a string, this is just a keyword, and this is just a map, right? Closure doesn't care. Okay, and then here is an example call of this function, but maybe first let's play around with this a bit. So there's a nice function called reseq, regular expression sequence, that finds um, multiple matches of a regex inside a string, and that's what we want because we want to find those colored bags. Okay, so some regex uh, and then our example string. Okay, um, right, so how could we find those bags? So to find a bag, we could say bag, and then maybe maybe followed by an S, so the S is optional, then we would find bags, bag, and bags. <laughs> but we don't have um, the colors yet. Okay, so how do we get at the color? So uh, multiple word characters, space, multiple word characters space. Ah, that's looking quite good. So we have light red, bright white, and muted yellow. And since we're only interested in the colors and not in the bag or bags after it, we can um, group those two words uh, with a space. And then we have the colors in their own separate group. Okay, cool. Um, but we're also interested in the number before the colors. So that would be um, backslash d plus and then a space okay then we have one bright white and two muted yellow that's quite nice but unfortunately now the light red is gone because the light red doesn't have uh, a number in front right it's an implicit one if you will <laughs> okay so we have to say hmm this entire group can either be a um, number followed by a space, or it could be the beginning of the string, right? This marks the beginning of the string, and then our light red is back, this time with nil, because nothing is at the front there. Um, right, we pick the, the, the empty string right here where my cursor is, right? That's nil. Okay, but now unfortunately we have another group, um, the digit with a space, so that would be this group. We need this group because without the group, uh, this would apply to too much of the regex. I want to restrain it to this part here. Um, okay, so is that even necessary? Let me see. Yeah, so at the beginning, then we have some crap. <laughs> okay. So um, how can we say we are not really interested in the result? So the group doesn't have to be extracted. We just need it for mathematical grouping. We can simply say open parent question mark colon, and then um, the superfluous group disappears from the resulting groups. Okay, cool. So now maybe let's try to extract the useful information. So that would be the first useful information that we're interested in. And then we have to extract the information from the following sequence. How would we do that? So maybe let's start with a let expression. Okay, so um, if I simply write anything down here, then we get the entire sequence of vectors. I want to peek um, uh, inside the first element that would be these three groups. Mm. Oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Oh, I want to destructure the whole sequence. 
right? Do I want this uh, this vector or this vector or this vector? I want the first one and I want to peek into that as well, okay? And then the light red bags aren't that interesting to me, the nil isn't interesting to me, and the light red is the container. Okay, so let's step out of the first group. Now we're basically here. Okay, and then I can say and elements, then I get the rest uh, as it is. Um, okay, and then of course I have to provide the initializer that would be here. So let's put the initializer right here. Okay, and then we are done with the let binding and then we can use it. So what would be container in this case? Yeah, that would be light red. That looks beautiful. What would be the elements? Okay, so that's the rest of the sequence. So um, a sequence containing two vectors. Okay, so maybe let's now map over those elements. All right, so let's map a function over it. Okay. And what should that function do? So that function accepts an element and this element is um, basically this vector. And if we want to destructure that, we have to pr provide another level of nesting and then say one bright white bag is not interesting to us. The one is interesting to us and the color is also interesting to us. Okay, and then we want to move that into a new vector like here it would be n in color, but the n should be converted from a string to an int. Okay, so I have to say integer pass int because later we have to calculate with that. Okay, right, and then we get um, exactly the information that we want. This is the same sequence that you see above here. Okay, but of course we don't just want to return the sequence, we want to have a um, a map that maps from the container to the sequence. So I have to put everything into braces and use container as the key. Okay, and now ah, that's exactly the result that we want. That's exactly what we see in line 21. Okay, so let's now put this into the pass back function and of course replace the concrete input um, with our parameter and then it can go into the same line. Yeah. Okay, cool. And now let's see if it still works. Yeah, it still works. So and it should work for arbitrary input, not just um, this one. Okay, so let's see if it works for arbitrary input. So um, again, I prepared a little scaffolding for reading in the entire file from the disk. We get the classic stream close, so let's use a vector. And here you can see that indeed the file contains of those lines that we already know how to pass. Okay, so let's maybe say we map the pass back function over it. And now we have a nice um, vector of maps where each map only has a single key value mapping. And now I would like to merge all these maps into a single map and the merge function uh, expects the map passed uh, individually, all the maps, not just in a single sequence. So again, we have to apply the merge function. And then, um, right, I don't want the vec anymore. <laughs> then we have a single map uh, mapping all the containers to the um, counted colors. Okay, cool, so we're already done with that. Maybe let's um, save that in a global variable. Let's call it database. Okay, and um, if we now look at the database, we, we don't have to read it from the disk again and again and again. <laughs> okay, and you can see the shape um, of this value here, right? So just as for functions, I like to comment the input and the output. Here, I like to comment the general shape. So it's a map and it maps from strings to sequences of pairs where the first one is a count and the second one is a string. Just so I can understand this program tomorrow or next week. Okay, so now we can read the file and parse it into um, data. So now the first um, actual task. How many bag colors can eventually contain at least one shiny gold bag? So here you see um, the shiny gold bag. 
Um, it is contained, for example, by the muted yellow bags and the bright white bags directly. But uh, white and yellow are also contained by uh, red and orange, right? That you can see here. So uh, all of these directly or indirectly contain shiny gold bags. The question is how many are there um, in total? Okay, so I wrote a little function subcontains that given a container, um, for example, light red should return uh, true if we pass in shiny gold as the second parameter. Okay, so let's start with the um, container that we are that we're given and look it up in the database. So maps are functions. If I apply container to the database, then we look up the key container in the map database and then we get our nice sequence of counted colors. Okay, and then um, we want to check whether some of those um, counted colors um, satisfy a certain uh, predicate. Okay, so that would be a um, function that is passed a counted color. So if you destructure that a count and a color, and then we can simply check if the color inside that element is the color that we're looking for. That would be the um, direct containment. Okay, but that's not enough. That would only find the um, white and yellow bags because they contain shiny gold directly. If we also find the want to find the indirect containments, we have to say, well, if we don't find it indirectly, why don't we simply call ourselves recursively? Now the container is the color and we still look um, for the same color. Okay, so that's a classic recursive algorithm. And as long as there are no cycles in our data structure, this should uh, work. Okay, so let's see if it works. Let's start with the database and then say we want to filter. And um, now if you look at a map as a sequence, then it's a sequence of key value pairs, right? And we can immediately destructure that key value. And in our case, the key is the container and the value are the elements. Okay, we want to know if sub contains container shiny gold. Okay, let's see if something comes out. Yeah, okay, you can see something comes out. But uh, how many are there? Let's simply count. Okay, 226. And that's the number that was accepted um, by, the, by the website. Okay, so classic uh, recursive solution. Okay, part two asks us how many individual bags are required inside your single shiny gold bag. So you can see shiny gold contains one dark olive and two vibrant plums. So you can say, ah, the answer is three, but it's not only three, it's also all of the bags contained in a dark olive bag and all the, of the bags contained in a vibrant plum bag times two, right? That's what we now have to compute. <laughs> Okay, and I prepared this sub count skeleton for that. Okay, so we start with the container again, uh, look it up in the database. So we have our counted color sequence and we can simply now reduce the sequence. For example, add up the one and the two, that would be the first step. So let's say we want to reduce. A reduce takes a function, a value and a collection. The collection is already provided by the thread last macro. We don't have to provide that ourselves. Let's start with the value zero, counting from zero seems to make a lot of sense. And now this function, what does this function get as um, parameters? For reduce, the first parameter is a temporary value, sometimes also use, uh, called accumulator. It starts out with the initial value and then uh, stepwise gets uh, the next value. Okay, and then we get our counted color as the second parameter. We can just structure that into a count um, and a color. And then we can simply add to the temporary value the number n. That would uh, give us the direct uh, counts of the contained bags, but not of the sub bags. So we want to add even more. What do we want to do? We want to call ourselves recursively with a color. So we would get, for example, here the sub count of the vibrant plum bags, but then we have to multiply that by two. Okay, so let's multiply by two. Maybe let's put it on a different line so it stands out better. Okay, so let's see if we now compile this. 
and try it out the sub count of shiny gold then we get 1915 because I hard coded the number 2 instead of using n <laughs> that number didn't sound familiar to me yeah that sounds much more familiar that was the number that was accepted okay cool Whoa, that was quite the hard solution it took it took me some time <laughs> let's see if a quick um, recap makes sense Okay, so first of all, I really like to comment my functions and my complicated global variables if it's more than just a sequence of numbers or something. I think that's a, that's a good idea. If you are a um, professional closure programmer, you would probably use spec or something like this to do it in a more formalized manner. Okay, so what do, do we see? So here's the reseq function that we hadn't used yet to find multiple matches inside of the string, whereas rematches only finds a single string. And of course, we also can use these groups. Uh, we can ignore the groups in the result. We can uh, look for the beginning of a string um, and we can make stuff um, optional, for example, the S after bags. But our solution would also work if we just wrote bag, right? Because we're not really interested in the S anyway. We don't have it inside a group. Okay, so this is just a map literal. That was just an example. This is, um, yeah, so the merge function was new. You can merge multiple maps uh, into a single huge map. Okay, maybe there's also an alternative that doesn't require all those single element maps. If you know a better solution or a more space efficient solution, please let me know. Okay, and then here was our first recursive function. Um, I think the sum function is quite interesting. Um, you should learn that. That's always a good idea. And here's our um, recursive call where the contained color is used as the container in the next recursion. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that was not really that fancy. And then the second, the second one, uh, the reduce function was quite interesting. You can use it all the time. Um, once you understand what the parameters mean, it's, it's not so hard to write them yourself. And um, yeah, the recursive call was a bit more involved because we still have to multiply it and then also add it up. Um, but um, that's not too hard. Okay, so I expect the next problems to get progressively harder and harder. Let me know if you would like to see the following days. I'll have to invest uh, more time and energy into it, definitely. <laughs>